Good morning, everyone. It's pretty early. I got up early for you guys so I could get this done. This is the market bag video that I've been promising. So this is the first one that I made. Super cute, right? It's got the vinyl mesh. Now the difference is that between the pattern that we started with was the cut loose vinyl mesh market bag. Okay, customer brought it in. I said, so cute, love it, wanna make it. So the problem I had was the straps were kind of funky and that they only came to here. So what we did was we changed the design a little bit to put the straps all the way through. So that the, number one, the straps aren't cutting through the fabric on the front, because I don't want that. But then they said, well, then there's no pocket because there was a pocket you could make on the outside. Well, I stuck a pocket on the inside so that you could stick your phone in there or your cash in there. Um, and I made a couple other changes. So I wanted to go through it with you on a video. Now the second one I made was this one with that cute, this is a panel. We still have that. Um, and now this one is more of a sleepover bag. We were doing it as an Easter bag, but sleepover now, because Easter's over. And there's a pocket on the outside on each side. And I only did the handles on the top for this one. And I did write an instruction for this one as well. I wrote instructions for both. So if you order supplies for these bags, you'll get the pattern modifications along with it. But I only put the handles on the top because this is for the itty bitties. You know, they're not gonna carry heavy groceries in this. I, I don't think, unless you're sending your kids to Wegmans. Okay, so, so there's instructions for both. Um, there's a little bit of prep to this, so I kind of have myself set up here in the front of the store. Um, I've done a little bit already. Um, I'm using this fun Paris fabric for my net, this bag. Now what I've done so far is I've taken my, because these engineered stripes can be a little tight in terms of you know how you have to cut them in order to get the most out of it. Um, ask Pat and her stripe table runners. I'm just pressing there's, um, I put Steamaseam. Okay, so this is the product I'm using. Steamaseam two, quarter inch, all right? It's a double stick. It's like a, it's a uh, fusible uh, web, but it's got paper on it, so you press it on give it a little steam with your i'm using my little mighty iron my mighty seam iron and that does steam quite nicely you do need that for this I'm using my wool mat because that gives me a nice press and i can press anywhere i can keep it right next to my machine so i've got the paper on there now and now i'm gonna get kind of my fingernail under there and when you start peeling, you wanna make sure you're actually not bringing the web with it. So you can kind of feel it's sticky there. So peel that paper right away, all right? And then, oh, there's my iron is steaming like crazy. So then you can turn it right over and just, it's a little bit tacky, so it'll kind of hold in place for you. When you turn it over, you can turn it over right on the tape. And I'm, this is not in the pattern, it's in my modifications, because when you have a tight, space like I only wanted to turn over a scant quarter inch so I don't lose any of this um, pretty print that I'm using these engineered stripes are like that you've got to you got to be ready to be snug to the to the pattern so because I wanted a little bit of that black to show which it does okay but then I've got that edge that I'm going to top stitch has got that steam seam in it so it makes it a little more stable if I had a half an inch to turn under there if I was just using a regular all over print, I probably wouldn't do that steam seam step. Um, I would just turn it under. So that's what on the top panel, the other prep you're gonna do is there's a uh, this strip along the top. So that with the bag, this piece here gets hem turned under on the top. This piece here gets turned under on the bottom before you attach it to the vinyl so that they're ready to stitch. So for the top of the bag, you have four strips. This is all in the pattern. You have four strips. Um, I cut them to three and a half. That's a little bit flexible depending on, um, you know, say this one, the stripe dictated how wide it was, right? So, you know, let the stripe tell you what to do if you're using a stripe. 
with this one same thing this was a, a stripe so that kind of dictated what I was gonna do this isn't all over it I decided three and a half inches was good so um, two of these will go on the outside of the bag and two of these there's four of them two of them will go on the inside of the bag so all the cutting instructions are on the pattern you don't have to worry about writing this stuff down um, but you do want to turn this edge under and since this wasn't anything where I needed to be scant I just I'm just turning under the edge a half inch on two of them and I'm gonna turn them under a quarter a three-eighths of an inch on two of them so that you know if they're different if they're offset a little bit you make sure when you top stitch those together that you catch um, you don't want something flopping around in there so I want to show you another cool little tool that I have and that's my fabric folding pen it's got a mysterious liquid in it I don't know what it is I'm not sure I want to know no it's not toxic but it's just it's a cool thing so if you're ever just folding something and you're sick of the tediousness of having to measure and turn, measure and turn, measure and turn, you use this little guy, it's got a liquid in it, and you just follow along with your ruler. I love these little, I love my quilting ruler, but this size for sit next to your sewing machine is the best. So now I'm gonna go to my pressing pad, and since I've made that mark, See what happens? It turns right on that mark where I drew. I don't have to do any more than just press it. Mm -hmm, I think I'm out of water. Press, press, press. And see, it just turns right on that line that I just drew. Press, press. I love these mini irons. They do have a relatively small tank, <laughs> but luckily I brought more water. Let's fill it up. Mm -hmm. Just a little water in there. I use distilled water in all my irons now. I've had enough issues with irons that distilled water is not that big a deal to use that, just to protect them. My new irons that are my favorite are the Reliables. I'm so sick of having Rowenta spit all over my fabric. All right. So now I have my top pieces all prepared. Okay. And I'm going to match them up. So there's one with the big turn, one with the small turn, one with the big turn, one with the small turn. So you see those are sets. Those are an inner and an outer. So that's my prep. The other prep you're gonna do is to mark up your vinyl. And this is where, I brought one of these, we just got some new cutting mats in, these uh, Tula Pinks, and I got them in, if you don't have a 36 by 24 mat, get one, because it makes a huge difference, especially when laying something like this out. Um, this is a piece of the black, and they come 18 by 36 for this bag. And I used a chalk aligner to mark it. I found, I tried a couple different things. I tried a chalk pencil. It was okay, but it, you know, it, it didn't, you know, there's a lot of bumps on this vinyl. And this little wheel seems to go over it really well. Um, the other thing is, is on the, my pattern modifications, I tell you how to mark it up. And I marked um, on the inside for the strap placement and on the inside and the outside, you can't really see it because it's clear. Um, but there's markings here to show you the bottom and where to place the pocket and everything. So I marked that on both sides because you'll need that because you have a pocket on the inside. The strap placement can just be on the inside of the vinyl. There's no right or wrong side. Just decide which is going to be the right side. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is place my pocket, which I did make my pocket already. And I just did that by cutting a piece, you know, that big. Depends on... The size of your pocket really does depend on the size of your bottom panel, which is sometimes dictated by the print again. So, you know, I can tell you what size to cut it, but if you're, if you're using a stripe or something that's specific, that's gonna dictate what you're gonna cut. So just use your head. This pocket has to hide behind this stripe, so it's gotta kind of be that similar size, okay? So I'm going to, what I did was, I took a piece and I seamed the sides, turned it right side out, gave it a nice press, and then um, 
tucked in the raw edges on the bottom. Okay, so the pocket goes this way. So the fold will be on the top. You can interface this. I didn't interface this one, um, but interfacing is not a bad idea. And I'm gonna place that right along. There's an intersection of the strap marks and the marks where um, the bottom will start. So what there is, is there's a, a center. I marked the center. And let me give you a little tip. This mesh is kind of hard to line a ruler up on and stuff. Fold the piece in half when you first start. So fold it in half and clip out a clip. So now I have, can you see that? It's so hard. I have a little clip in the center on both sides. Okay, so there's a little notch cut out. That will make your life so much easier because then when you want to mark the center of the bottom, you just take your ruler and go from center of the clip to center of the clip. And then to do your side pieces, you know, you need to mark the center and then you mark two and three quarters on either side because that's where the bag bottom turns. That's going to be your bag bottom. You'll see that. Um, the six and a half by 24 inch Creative Grids ruler has a really nice, I'll try to grab that and show you, has really nice feature. It has um, little black circles on the ruler with the three quarter markings and the, and the half and the um, five eighths. It has all those little markings marked periodically on the lines. So you don't have to look, count lines over every time. It's got a little marking on it. So that made my life super easy. So what we're gonna do first is the, do the pocket. So I'm gonna lay this down. This is wrong side up. I'm gonna lay this pocket with the bottom along the line that I drew. And the good side of the pocket should be out towards you, okay? So I want this little uh, motif to be out. And I could try to get a pin in there, I guess, to hold it. Because what's gonna happen is, you see you have your lines, your placement lines for your strapping. That is what's gonna hold the sides of the pockets down. Um, but I wanna make sure that the bottom doesn't wiggle around. So there, that, looks, that looks pretty good. It's pinned. That line is just a little bit above where that bottom line is gonna turn, just scantily above that. And now I'm gonna stitch along that bottom line, okay? Wanna watch me sew? Here we go. control where I can get to it <clears throat> on the bottom move my zircle out of the way and just your standard two and a half stitch length is absolutely fine now this is the bottom of a pocket so you know keep that in mind a nice back stitch. Okay, so that pocket is now secure on the bottom. All right, so I wonder what the zircle looks like. Has everyone got a zircle? Look at how that, all the heads. I used to have a grab it, and I always had mounds of pins, and I would poke myself every time I went to get one. Now with my zircle, it just, it redirects the pins, the heads of the pins towards the outside edge. <clears throat> okay, so I've got my pocket all secured. I've re-threaded my machine with black thread. I'm going to now construct the top panels. And I need one that has the 3 8 turn and one that has the half inch turn. I'm gonna stitch those together on the unfolded side. Get this out of here. Just a quarter inch seam is fine. together. So this is going to be the top fabric panel on the bag. And
Now I'm going to press that open. And then press it to the side. Because that seam allowance, you're not going to want to straddle that across the seam. Did everyone see what I just did? <laughs> the magic of video editing. Press those open. I'll be right back. I have to rip this out. Okay, pressing the other one open that was sewn perfectly, of course. And when I say quarter inch seam on this, I mean edge of your standard presser foot, which is more like three eighths. You do not want a scant seam allowance on this stuff or on the side seams. I use a nice, healthy three eighths seam allowance on the side seams because you're gonna wanna top stitch those down. Okay, so now I'm gonna press these seams to one side. Now I wanna press them to the side that has the bigger seam allowance because that's the inside. So the bigger turn on the edge. So you see I've got the 3 eighths and I've got the half inch. Press it towards the half inch because that's gonna be the inside of the bag. And you'll tuck those seam allowances right inside. You'll see. You'll see. I have no idea what the back of my head looks like. This is like three weeks past my haircut. Yikes. Who knows how big the hair will get? People have been going through their old pictures. Has anyone been doing that to you? Emailing you pictures of you from high school or before? Cruelty. It's just blatant cruelty. All right, so there are my top panels. Let's stop the steam. Okay, so we're gonna stitch those on to the vinyl. Okay, here's our vinyl. It's got the pocket on the inside. So we wanna make sure that we wrap this around and this, this snugs right around the vinyl. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this so that seam allowance, that seam is right on the edge and that seam allowance is inside. So can you see what I'm doing? The seam allowance is inside and I'm wrapping that around and because this is the one with the smaller fold, it will be a little bit, it will hide the inside edge, okay? I have both my pins and my clips here. I love these little magic clips because you can sew right up and over them. Have you seen these? I know everyone's got the wonder clips, but these are actually a little bit easier because you don't have to take them out. So you could put those on there. It might actually make it easier to go ahead and snug that up. Let's lay it down a little bit. red thread. Okay, so I'll lay that down and get that seam allowance where it needs to be and tighten that up. And then if you clip it, it's upside down. Get that in there nice and, you just want that vinyl to be right to the edge. You don't want any blank space in there. It's like when you do a binding. Okay, and your pieces should have been cut to 18 inches, so they should go right to the edge. So I'm thinking I have a little gap at the other end. There's my clip. Let's see. Yeah, I'm a little over on that side. Okay. And now I can pin the bottom edge. Just get it nice and flat. See how it's, it's nice to get that top clipped on there like that and then go ahead and pin the bottom. Hi, this is Lisa. 
And like I said, there's going to be a nice big seam allowance on this side seam. Oh, the bones are starting. Sorry about that. I gotta turn that down. Okay. So there we go. It's all clipped and pinned. Now I'm gonna go and top stitch right along this edge, making sure I catch, I'm in far enough that I catch the back. So I'm gonna say a healthy quarter, or just a quarter of an inch from the edge, eh, maybe a little closer. It's somewhere between an eighth and a quarter. It's a little wonder clip. Uh, pin cushion works for these magic clips too. And I am stitching from the right side. Okay, there's one. Okay, so there's your top band. I'm gonna put the other one on. Okay, so again, you want the one with the larger turn on the inside, and that seam allowance, again, will be on the inside. Lay it down. I did, um, another good thing about having a 36 inch board was I laid my vinyl out underneath it overnight and it did flatten it quite a bit, but I think this edge was kind of poking out. So it's still a little curly. Get my clip. So if I open that up, I can kind of lay that vinyl on the seam allowance, fold it down, clip it. Can you see what I'm doing? Let's see. Trying to make you seasick. So I'm kind of laying the vinyl up to that seam and then wrapping it around and clipping it, just so that seam allowance lays nice and flat in there. You don't want to try to straddle the vinyl with that seam allowance. That just never works out that well. These clips have a nice little quarter inch marking from um, line to line. I haven't quite figured out what I'm using that for, but if you know me, you know I'm not, not a huge quilter. I'm sure you guys will all give me comments on what that quarter inch marking is really useful for. Okay, so now I'm gonna pin the bottom edge and stitch that again, other side. So if we did it right, the bottom edge should hide behind, the back should hide behind the front, which is why I did an eighth of a inch difference in the fold. See, by the third one, see what I did? I got smarter. That's not the pattern, so you better write that down. Let's get that in there. Well, this is nice. Look at that. That black board for that tulip pink has really bright gold lines on it. Really easy to see. Of course it has the nice Tula logo on it. Okay, I'm gonna stitch this, and then it's time for the straps. Again, a little more than an eighth, a little less than a quarter. 
quarter. Okay. Possibly not my straightest sewing ever. I'm glad you're not closer. <laughs> okay. Now, time for the straps. Okay. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room. I'm gonna lay this down with the pocket up. That's the inside, and the straps on this go on the inside. So we're gonna start it at bottom. So we have our center of the bottom marked. I'm gonna turn it this way. And we've got our pocket pinned down. So our pocket is pinned down. There you are. I'm gonna center the strap, and I, on the pattern I say to put it on the inside of the line. Well, guess what, I made my pocket a little wider than maybe it needed to be. So I'm gonna center my strap on the line. You just want to make sure that the edge of that pocket is caught underneath that strapping. I'm just going to put one pin in. Okay, so I'm centering that strap on that line. But as long as you're consistent all the way around, no one's going to measure where your strap is. Just want it to be consistent. Make sure that pocket edge is covered. Okay, looks pretty straight. Come back to me, machine. All right. Now I'm gonna start on the inside edge of this strap. So on the left, as I'm looking at it now. I'm gonna start at the very beginning because we'll, what we'll do is we'll overlap the other edge and turn it under. Let's turn my needle down. Okay, so we're gonna cover that pocket. We're gonna come right up. And we're gonna come right through and stop at the top. Now if you do, I'm gonna show you something. You can come up. To the top of that cotton, of that fabric band. Let me bring you closer. Okay, so see I'm at the top of that fabric band. Closer still. I'm gonna turn it. Go across the top of the strap. Do a back stitch. This is a stress point. Okay, see what I just did? I'm gonna turn this all around. I'm gonna come back. This is another thing I have learned after making a couple. It looks better this way. Come back down the inside of that strap. We're sewing the straps on first because I don't want that stitching to show on my fabric. Now, so I have part of the strap sewn onto the inside. Can we see that? Now what I need to do is measure this bit. I want 20 inches. I'm gonna come over to my go back again 20 inches put 
put a mark pin in there. 20 inch loop. If you're short, don't make it 20 inches. Your bag will drag on the floor. I'm tall. So I want 20 inches. And that pin is going to go right to the top. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just your handle. That's your handle, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing we just did. Mm -hmm. Only this time, we're gonna have the entire length of the bag to go down. Okay, coming back in. No comments about my straight sewing, okay? Okay, so we're gonna start here, do a little back stitch. Come down. This is why we mark the strap mark on the front and the back, or on the back, so that we can make sure that we can see it. You would think that was, since it's mesh, that mark would go all the way through. No, it doesn't. Tried that. So I'm catching the pocket. And then I'm coming all the way down. Now you can pin this the whole way. But the most important thing is that it's just kind of straight. It looks like it's got a lot of wobble to it. So I'm going to do all the way down to here, down to the other edge, come across, turn it around, roll it up because this is going to, probably not going to do this on a passport. <laughs> um, if you're doing it on a passport, then just stop and start. You keep your bulk to the outside of your machine. But I'm doing this on the Performance Icon, which is my favorite machine I've ever sewn on. Do a little back stop, stitch, turn around, get that strapping out of the way, come down the other side. turn and I'm going to sew across the top a couple back stitches cut okay we're almost there with the straps okay see what I've done so I have a half and then I have a hole and now I'm gonna come around I need my 20 inch handle, so I'm gonna come over here and measure again. Okay, 20 inches. There we go. Pin that to the, and just double check, make sure you got enough strapping that it's gonna, it's gonna meet. Because if you don't, you're gonna make your handles a little shorter. We're not ripping this out at this point. Okay. So there we go, we're gonna pin this down. Oh, we got plenty. You know what, you probably gotta get away with three and a quarter for this, because I've got a little bit extra. All right, I am going to, for this part, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna cut my extra off. There we go. So I have a couple inches to turn under. This is going to be on the bottom. Okay. And I think I want to start sewing at this bottom area for this so that I have a nice clean turn up here. So I'm going to pin this, get some nice long pins for this. So what I did was I just turned under that strapping. I tucked under the raw edge a little bit. I guess you could probably melt it. This is poly. You could probably melt it and keep it single if you didn't think your machine was going to get through that. Um, that probably would be just fine. Uh, make sure that those edges are lining up, though. Just 
sew across the fold. I mean, my machine, this performance icon, it'll sew through anything. So I don't have to worry about that. I have, this is what I show everyone. That's what it sews through. What? So keep your fingers out of the way. We'll sew through them. Okay. Up to the top band. band again we'll do a little back stitch stress point and then back down on the outside edge of that banding and I will sew across So you see where we're going with this? That's the inside. Cute pocket, huh? Super cute. This is gonna be the outside. All right, so our next step is going to be to add the bottom panels. So I have already shown you that I finished the top of it with that steam seam and turned that under. So what I'm gonna do is, let me do the pocket side first. I could look at my instructions, but. All right, so I'm gonna lay this down, right sides down. On the mark, okay? So it's on the marking that I gave myself. Put a clip in. Because I've chalked a line on there. I need a quarter inch seam, so I'm gonna put it on the line. You wanna give yourself, when you mark these lines, lay on a nice heavy line. Because even though I did that, I'm still kinda of struggling to see it. Hard to find something that will mark nicely on mesh and stay. Okay, so that's on the line. See that? And then I'm gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna stitch, I can see, if you have a pattern that's on the stripe, I can see where I've got my little motif, this little guy. See that little black? I'm stitching right on the, on the edge of that because I want that to show. So that's my guide. Make sure my pocket's gonna be underneath there, not sticking out. So the pocket should be, the edge of the pocket should be somewhere to the right of the stitching line. And then I'm gonna show you a little, I'm so far from my machine. Oh, I can't reach it. Okay, so there I am. I've stitched it, quarter inch seam allowance. Now what you wanna do is you wanna turn this up and check it, that the pocket's not showing on the bottom and that the pocket gets covered. Let's lay this down so you can see. So you turn this up and make sure that that pocket is 100% hidden behind that panel. You don't wanna see it poking up here, 
Okay, so I can see that it is. And we're, when we stitch this down, we're not gonna catch the pocket. I'm gonna make sure of that. So you can see the pocket lives behind that panel. So that's a good check to do right now. Now, my, my tendency is to wanna press this, but I'm afraid I'm gonna melt the vinyl. <laughs> I don't think you wanna press this. So what you wanna do is you wanna pull it taut. You wanna pull it nice and taut before you top stitch it. Okay, so it's good to lay it flat. I probably could get rid of this iron right now. Because I think I'm done. I'm done pressing. I'll put it in my little tote. Because that's heat resistant. Isn't that cool? They fit right in there. And then the cord winds around the other end. Okay. My little silicone pad. So there's the, if you don't have a wool mat, and that little silicone pad lets you sit the iron right on there. You don't have to tip it up. So lay this down flat. Pull it up tight. You see what I'm doing? I'm smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. Okay, the clip on the side. The clip on this side. And then a couple pins through the middle. Oh, that pin is bent. Don't pin where the, um, the straps are. I make your life hard. Okay. Ready. Top stitch the top edge. Okay, right where that seam is seam is. Close to the edge. You want to be close to the edge. Very close. One of our bottom panels is done. Okay, there you go. Isn't that cute? I'll do the other one. Okay, I'm back. Both bottom panels are on. Okay. One this side, one this side. Okay. Now, next thing is side seams. This is where these clips are super important. Nobody wants to pin through all this thickness. And you do want to kind of make sure that those panels, the top of them, this the more important spot is the top. So kind of try to make sure those match up. And the side of your bottom panel too. Or top panel. You know what I meant. Okay. So you're gonna pin it all the way down. Put your clips in all the way to the bottom and you're gonna stitch that entire side seam and then we're gonna serge it because I like things to be finished. 
So I'm gonna pin both, or clip both, I should say. Make sure the tops match up. I don't want two top edges that are not together. Ooh, looks like I did a pretty good job. You know, some are better than others. When I look at the side of the bags, some match perfectly, some not so perfect. I'm trying to cut myself a break, you know? All right, here we go. Side seams. This is gonna be a nice, hefty, I like a half inch seam on this. Because we're gonna top stitch this to the side. And what I found is, you know, some of the bags I've seen, they looked like they were collapsing it on themselves. And I didn't like the way that looked. So I decided that I was gonna fell this seam but not really fell it, just top stitch it to the side. And it made the world a difference. It just gave it that stability it needed. Half inch seam allowance. And with this clip, I can pull it out a little bit and I can sew right up and over it so that, this is where you end up with the trouble, right? You take the clip out, and something moves and all of a sudden your edges don't match. Well, with these clips, I can sew right over them because I'm not sewing on them, but they're flat. With the Wonder Clips, you gotta take them out. With this, I can, I'm not using my thread cutter on this. You want that thread cut short. But see, I could leave that in and because it's flat, I can sew right over it. I love these things. Other side. it over my clips are backwards no I'm gonna switch them there is an up and down to these clips you put them in upside down you can't sew over them that would be a shame see how I can sew right over that love it how many times have I clipped something or pinned something and I had to take the pin out because I can't sew over pins? Shouldn't. And um, something shifted. These things I can back them off a little bit, keep them right in there. Cut that thread close. I hate threads hanging out. Okay, so my side seams are done. Okay, I'm gonna go surge them. I'll be right back. Oh, here, have it all. I'll bring you with me. I have my triumph threaded, and I'm just gonna do a four thread overlock. Now, it's okay to trim the fabric with the blade. Please don't trim the vinyl with your blade. You're just gonna give that a quick overlock because the vinyl will be fine, but this cotton will ravel. I don't want the inside of my bag to look yucky. It's a four thread. Okay, that was quick. Let's go back. Okay, so if you didn't want a bottom, you could be done, right? But no, we want a bottom. I'm gonna cut these threads off, these surging threads. I'll deal with those, with those later. But right now, what I wanna do is I want to top stitch these seams down because if I don't, then that's when that bag starts to, let me show you, they would, they sort of went like this. The ins, the, the sides kind of collapsed in. Now mine stand up nice and straight, like that, because I top stitched the sides. Now this is not for the faint of heart, okay? You wanna be working with the bag wrong side out, and you're gonna kinda get yourself into that 
tunnel. And let's see if I can get you closer so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And you, you really can't get all the way to the bottom. And you don't need to, because that's gonna get, um, that's gonna get boxed anyway. Get as close as you can. And sometimes you'll find that the seam allowance, it doesn't really matter which way you go with the seam allowance. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you'll find the seam allowance wants to go one way or another. And like with this one, it wants to go this, this way, this way. So I'm gonna let it go that way. And I'm gonna get it in there. And I am gonna top stitch about a quarter of an inch. This is why I wanted a nice healthy seam allowance. A quarter inch from the seam. So my foot is riding right along the edge of that seam. And I'm just gonna open this up and kind of pull on it as I go. And work my way down. Pulling on it as I go. You see what I'm doing? Let's see if I can get you closer. Edge of my foot's a lot right along that seam line. And here I come, I'm getting to the bottom panel. Now you could stop here. I did on the market bag. I think I stopped at the top of this. So let me show you. And this might be enough. Depending on how wide your bottom panel is, that might be enough. I'm going to take a look at it. And I think that is. Uh, do I want to go all the way down? I'm gonna see if I can get further. I think I can get to the bottom of the bottom panel. But it, that would probably be enough right there. Do I wanna stitch through there? I think I do. This is a decision you make on the fly. Let's get back in there. And I'm just gonna open that up as much as I can and pull it tight. Now, if you have weakness in your hands, then just go to the top of that panel and don't even try to go any further because this is, you gotta really kinda horse this. Just anything you can do is fine. Oop, I took my as far as I'm gonna get. So see, I just top stitched down as far as I could get. And as far as I could get was about halfway down that fabric panel. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm moving you away again. So I'm getting in there. I'm at the bottom panel now. Pull it open as much as I can. Just flatten it out. I'm using my fingernails quite a little bit here. I think I can get another couple inches. Okay. 
All right, now our side seams are top stitched. All that's left is to box the bottom. And how nice that we can fold this. You have your center, because that's where your seam is, correct? And you can measure. Do I usually measure? No, I usually just look at it and kind of fold it. And you can see that fabric band shows you where to sew, because that's what you want to have be the edge of your bottom. So fold that. And whichever way, you gotta make sure you know which way you stitched your seam allowance, so make that seam go the same direction. Don't have a twist in there. Now, if you wanna measure so that you make sure that's in the center, you can. Oh my gosh, now I'm feeling like I should. Okay, so that's two inches, two inches. Perfect. Stitch the bottom. Stitch right along the edge of that fabric. One, done, and then the other one, make sure you put that seam the correct direction. Flatten that out a little bit. Okay, measure, jeez. I can hear Maria in my ear. Make sure you measure that. Okay, stitch along the bottom panel. And when you get to this point, it will become um, very clear. Okay, so see, that was my stitching line right along the edge of that fabric. It's done. That wasn't so bad, was it? Are you ready? I'm gonna turn it right side out. Super cute. Okay, moving your way a little bit. Okay, and just poke those corners out. Get that RNK turning tool working for you. Actually, the OESD one, hold on. Have you seen that new one? It's got, um, let me get it. So this is, we've always had the um, RNK turning tool. But at our OESD event, they brought these and we were, what, this is awesome. Because it has one end that has a tiny little ball and one end that has a bigger ball. Isn't that cool? So both ends are good. So that is from OESD, right? They are $15.99. And this is awesome for when you're trying to get these corners out. So I can get in there and I can poke and it won't go through, but it, brings those corners out. Now, the other thing you can do is you can just kind of scrunch along the bottom to kind of train it a little bit. So see how I'm just kind of giving it a nice hard press along all these edges? Really can't press these, don't press them. Don't put them in the dryer. But the nice thing about these bags is you can wash them and then hang them to dry. Those Wegmans bags, Isn't that so cute? I love this one. So this was, and you see how that, just that little top stitching on the side makes that stand right up. You can, and if you take, this is the exact size of a Wegmans bag. So if you want, now this is clear on the bottom, or open on the bottom, because it's just vinyl. And it's nice because it's got a lot of air that goes through there for produce and stuff. But if you want, you can take the, the solid plastics from your Wegmans bag and tuck them in here too and they'll be fine. Um, this stripe, I decided, okay, so this, this is the fabric, okay? And this is the stripe that we could have done along the top panel, because it's, it's the stripe. And uh, usually with these engineered stripes, they have the main and then they have a smaller motif, correct? I felt like I really wanted that red. You know, what a pop, nice pop that is with her little rose in her hair or in her hat. So I think that's adorable. 
And if you get, if you want this bag, um, you really need to get at least three quarters of a yard of this to get one, probably two bags out of that. If you get a yard and a half, you'll get definitely four bags and you can do, um, there's the different Paris motifs, but I liked, I liked the lady with the hat. There's also, you could center, you could fussy cut on this one too with the stamp. Okay, so there's my Paris bag. Now I have three shopping bags. I wanted to show you a couple other options. Besides this one, we can't show you because we don't have the fabric anymore. And we got all different colors of mesh in. Let me show you that. Now we don't have strapping all these colors, but look at all that color. Woo! So, um, but we have black strapping by the bucket loads, navy, and I got gray as well, because I figured there'll be something to go with all of these in those colors. And then, let's see, this is a pretty one. So there's another stripe, right? That would be really pretty with black or with this pretty pink. Oh, that's really pretty actually. Okay, so there's a pretty one that's got poppies and hummingbirds. Doesn't have to be a stripe though. It could be a panel. This is awesome. Look at how pretty that would be. Oh my gosh. Look at that with that orange. Oh, or with the lime green. Really pretty. That would be a beautiful one. Another panel we have. Oh, my poor little bunny bag is laying there getting we still have this, so if you want to make a bunny bag, or this panel had, I want to say, eight different, um, eight different uh, characters. So there's that. This is gorgioso. It's got this. It's a oh, it's a panel. So pretty. Oh my gosh, you could put that with any color. I love it. And then the last one I want to show you is these. P and B's. Look at how gorgeous that would be. And it would be pretty with purple, with a light blue, but I like it with the navy. There's the navy. I like it with navy, because I think that's classic. So that's the end of my video. Someone's knocking at my door. I better go see what they want. If you want to, now one thing I was gonna do is I've got all these colors. If you want to call and say, hey, I want this color mesh, pick out a fabric for me. It'll be a little surprise for you. I'll pick something out that goes with it. Um, or you can use the watch the fabric video and pick something yourself. So let me know if you want to do a kit. Uh, the kits run about $20 for all the supplies. And then the pattern is, I think, $2.99, $3.99. And then that will include all the modifications. So don't forget the Tula Pink cutting mats are awesome, the irons. If you want any of the supporting products, let me know. I'm going to put you up on, this up on YouTube, and you can watch it as many times as you want. Take care. Stay well. Keep sewing.